In this video, I'll share my five biggest takeaways from my first 100 days working as a freelance graphic designer. And hey, if you're new here, I'm Eric, a key art and brand designer based in New York City. From 2009 until 2023, I was working as a full-time in-house graphic designer. But in the spring of 2023, that all changed when I got laid off from my job. I've been freelancing for six months now, and I've definitely experienced some highs and some lows but I've never felt more fulfilled or satisfied in my career. Let's get into the five biggest takeaways that I've learned so far. Number one, I thought I had security. So in 15 years, I've been laid off five times, but my brain kept thinking that I was secure having a full-time job. It's weird, right? Maybe it was the consistency of having a check every two weeks or having health insurance, but y'all, if I can just tell you, that ish is expensive, but really, there is no such thing as security in a full-time job. The only thing that's been consistent is that in an economic downturn or times of uncertainty, the first people that are gonna be let go are probably the marketing and creative people. I was really tired of just putting my fate in someone else's hands, but before I started looking for gigs, I had to come to terms with my own fears and self-doubt. I didn't know if I could get those clients on my own. And if I could, could I handle multiple projects at the same time and still deliver high quality work? The first 100 days have been a lot of reminding myself of what I'm capable of and relying on my skills. And my experience working as a designer over the last 15 years helped me build up my confidence in myself. I learned everything I could from each job and in doing so, I became well-versed in print, in digital, in social media, branding, packaging, key art, and motion design. It also helped me become more confident in my ability to produce high quality work under pressure and with tight deadlines, which happens a lot. Number two, getting clients is about relationships. One of the biggest questions I had coming into all of this was how do I even get clients? Yeah, I've had clients in the past, but I was also working a full-time job. So I had the stability of that money coming in, but how was I going to get enough clients to actually supplement that income and pay my bills? I did check job boards at first. Sure, being a millennial, that's kind of my go-to. After a week or two, I quickly realized that the jobs that I'm looking for, I'm not gonna find them there. I started contacting people that I used to work with, reaching out to people I was already connected to on LinkedIn and some recruiters. Over a month or so, responses slowly started to trickle in. It wasn't like a flood of messages or anything, but maybe one to three a week. I'd start talking to them and then maybe a gig would come out of it. A lot more often, I would speak to someone and they'd say that they might have something for me in like a month or two but also they might refer me to somebody else. This is a huge shift for me. It's shown me how even while I'm working, I also have to be connecting with people so they have me in mind for work. It also reminded me of the power of relationships. So many friends and old colleagues of mine were so eager to help and put in a good word for me when they found out what kind of gigs I was looking for. Now that I'm establishing new relationships with new clients, I'm seeing how important it is to nurture those relationships and continue to support them rather than making every single project a one-off. One client that initially brought me in to do some key artwork said that things were starting to dry up a little bit. But instead of just saying, okay, thanks, and leaving it at that, I mentioned the fact that I can also provide creative support in areas like branding or motion design if the need should arise. And then maybe a week or two later, they brought me back to help out on a different project using some of those skills. So it's okay to remind people what you can do, especially when you are starting to build that relationship. If you have already shown a client that you can do good work and that you come from a place of how can I support you, you'll be much more likely to stand out in someone else's mind because so few creatives are taking that kind of approach where they speak up. Number three, I'm growing artistically and professionally. There was always a point in pretty much any full-time job I had, maybe like two to three years in, where I just start to feel kind of stagnant and a little bit bored. The work isn't challenging anymore, I was doing the same thing every day, or I couldn't move up. I don't necessarily just mean climbing the ladder and getting a nice title, I'm also talking about being given opportunities to use and develop new skills, both technical skills and soft skills. In the last 100 days, I've freelanced with two agencies, three entertainment companies, an independent filmmaker, and a university. That's a lot of variety in the work using my main skills as a brand designer and a key art designer. I feel like I'm stretching myself because I have to jump in and meet new people, 
work with new teams, and learn their processes and how they communicate with each other. I have to shift and be thinking of new ideas all the time and new approaches because all these brands are so different. Number four, money, money, money. I've struggled with budgeting because it's so hard to know what my average take home is going to be each week or month to month. Some weeks I have a ton of clients and projects due and others can be a little bit slower. Additionally, clients pay differently. So for example, some clients might pay me with a W-2, some pay with a 1099, sometimes I get paid weekly, and other times I'll get paid you know, net 30, 60, or 90. For those who don't know, net 30, 60, and 90 basically just means that the client has that number of days to pay you after you submit an invoice or a time card. This has been a huge learning curve. What I've decided to do is build a two month buffer of expenses in my business account. This is separate from my emergency fund, which is five months of living expenses that I had already saved up. This two month buffer will make it so that even if I have a slow month or two of work, or if I'm waiting to get paid from a client, I have more time to get more clients and make more connections. It has taken me about six months to get that two month buffer in place. And I've found that I've been saying yes to a lot of projects, which feels a little bit intense, but I know that it's only for the short term. There is an upside to making money as a freelancer or a business owner. There is really no ceiling to what you can charge because you're setting your own prices or rates. I've found that part to be invigorating because I'm in control of the rates I'm asking for and I see it as a way to invest in myself. Lastly, as much as it hurts, I have learned to put aside some money for taxes. As I get a better idea of what my income is gonna look like over the next six months or so, I'll adjust accordingly. Number five, managing time and rest. When I worked in-house, I was in the office for eight, nine, 10 hours a day working for one client the whole time. I had a project manager who would help me figure out which projects to prioritize and which ones could wait. It was also really helpful to know how much time and effort to put into one project versus another. But now that I work for myself, I am the project manager. It's up to me to juggle multiple tasks and timelines to determine how to make the most of my time to get things done. It would be nice to be able to spend a whole day or even a whole week on a project, but oftentimes that's just not how it goes. Instead, I've had to learn how to time block my days so that I can do the deep focused work that I need to do for one client before taking a break and moving on to something else. Maybe most importantly, that also means starting and stopping work at a reasonable time to avoid getting burned out. Managing my own time has been challenging, but it's also been a really important lesson that has helped me understand how important structure and a routine can be. Spending even 30 minutes a day doing something I love has made a huge difference. If you've seen my day in the life of a graphic designer video, then you'll know that I'm deliberately planning dedicated chunks of time to doing the deep focused work that I need to do and then building in time for other hobbies or activities that I enjoy. To me, this is one of the ways that I have learned to find a little bit more balance and just look after myself. So that's what I've learned in my first 100 days working as a freelance graphic designer. I know that there will be more ups and more downs and learnings along the way, and hopefully you'll be here on the journey with me. So if you're someone who is looking for more tips on how to structure your days and balance work and at least a little bit of fun or personal time, then check out this day in the life of a graphic designer video next. Okay, creatives, thanks so much for watching. Keep designing and we'll see you in the next one.